David, what can physics tell us about the nature of time, which has been in the realm of philosophy? Uh, well, time is one of the uh, most, mis uh, in many ways, one of the most mysterious aspects of nature uh, and raises many, many interesting questions has over the centuries, and our views of time have changed. And I suspect they will change even more. Uh, there are issues such as the arrow of time. Time seems to be flowing in a, in a given direction. Uh, to some extent, we understand that as, a, as we learned about uh, thermodynamics and about statistical mechanics, about the um, second law of thermodynamics, which defines an arrow, uh, the motion of time, towards more disorder, from order to disorder. Then there's cosmological time. The universe is expanding as time evolves forward. And those two arrows, cosmological time and, and the arrow of time, the thermodynamic arrow of time, disorder, order to disorder, coincide. And we have some understanding of that as well, why those arrows are the same. Why, as the universe expands, things get more disordered. Then there's the fact that you can only move one direction in time, unlike space, where you can go next door and come back. You can't in time, only one direction, which, if violated, would leave, give rise to all sorts of causality uh, paradoxes. Go back and you kill your grandmother. That's not so good for you. Uh, then there is uh, actually the fact that time plays a very special role in the way we think about physics, the way we think about the world. Uh, we say that the world evolves in time. The business of physics is to predict the future, given the past. It's all about time. And then there's another strange thing about time. I mean, there's only one time. We've learned there are three different directions you can move in in space. And now we've learned that there might even be more. There might be nine directions that we can move in in space, but only one in time. We can easily imagine mathematical structures in which there were two times. We would not know how to make sense of those physically, but why is there only one time? And then, at the bottom of it all, there is Einstein's view of time and space being unified into what we call space-time. And his admonition that we should think about space-time as a whole. Einstein once wrote to a a, the wife of a friend of his, who had died suddenly, uh, trying to console her, telling her that time, the present, is an illusion. You shouldn't be too unhappy that he's died, because the present is just an illusion. The thing that physics tells us to think about is not the present, which is moving forward, but the whole space-time manifold. That, in fact, is the object of cosmology. The whole thing, the past, the beginning, the Big Bang, the end, the whole time history of the universe, the whole space-time. Does this mean, though, that time is a physical property that needs to be explained, like gravity or electromagnetic radiation? Or is it something like causality and logic that is there that you have to deal with? Well, there are many different aspects of that. Uh, time, to some extent, is a label we use to mark events that occur in this sequence. Uh, there is a distance between events, a time distance, a second, an hour. Uh, we measure that by measuring the frequency of objects, uh, and we use clocks. That is a physical object. That metric difference, that time difference, uh, looks different to different observers. That Einstein told us. 
That's why the twin who goes off on the rocket trip and comes back is younger. And he actually is. And we can see analogous twins with particles that live, whose lifetime depends on how fast they're moving with respect to us. That would seem to suggest that time is, is like gravity and electromagnetic radiation, the, not something built into the absolute fabric of reality like logic and causation. Um, Yes, time is dynamical, and uh, the phenomena are dynamical, and they're labeled by what we call time, and including the time difference between events, the, what we call the metric of space-time, is a dynamical and indeed quantum mechanical fluctuating object. Uh, but we um, tend to think of time as evolving. One of the strangest notions is this notion, this feeling we have of, of the present moving, as if the somehow reality consisted of the universe at a given time, observer dependent as that might be according to Einstein, moving forward. But that I think is an illusion created by ourselves in a way which we do not yet understand since we no understand so little of how the human brain functions. So what would be an alternative reality? An alternative reality is the whole thing, the space-time manifold. That is what we're told to study. That is what the object of physics. This four-dimensional the the world that every, the fa that every point is a point in space-time. So it's located at a specific three-dimensional space and a moment in time, and they're all equivalent, all co-existing in some sense. It is. <laughs> and in that It space, is or it might be? It is. <laughs> and, okay. it, uh, and we are processes in that. Yes. And among the rest, those processes... Uh, complex collection, a collection of you know, um, billions, billions of billions of billions of atoms, somehow, collectively, construct at that, around that point, set of events at a given time, a picture of reality which uh, is conscious, comes to a consciousness of that uh, present. But that's a construction of that process that's taking place. And uh, there's nothing in physics that says, that indicates that any particular time in that process is any more fundamental than any other point in the space-time So if you would roll that back cosmologically, what are the implications to that first moment, or as some people say... I have what, no idea. What happened the first moment? No, no matter where I'm going, you have no idea. It doesn't matter what that question no, was. No, because I actually think <laughs> our, all those notions, even the notions I'm talking about now, which are based on, to some extent, although I... Uh, you know, don't understand in total detail how this collection of atoms manages to construct for itself an illusion of a present that's moving in time. Um, that I think that those classical notions of time, weird as they are in many respects, I think are going to get much weirder when we try to describe processes occurring at very short distances, very short times. We have indications from string theory and indeed from quantum gravity originally, uh, that uh, space, for sure, our notions of space are, are, very, are emergent concepts. They're not adequate to describe phenomena at very short distances. They break down. Our notions of points in space is simply an approximation to something else, which in some cases we, we know what replaces space. And if indeed space and time are unity, then it indeed. has to indeed. apply to time as well. Indeed. And there we have much less understanding and not, not very many examples that we can try to understand uh, theoretically. 
And, uh, and it's much harder because time is so essential, as I said originally, to the goal of physics. Physics is about, physics is somehow about correlating these events in the past with events in the future, making predictions, explaining how things evolve. Uh, that is sort of the traditional goal of physics. And then Einstein tells us, well, you have to explain the whole thing. <laughs> and when we go back to the beginning, these notions break down. Uh, so eventually, when we're, uh, we're now living in a period where we, we can see some of our basic notions of space and time breaking down, so I'm beginning to see how to modify them, but just beginning. Uh, certainly the lesson of history is that if you, some of your basic concepts are being threatened, they're probably going to be replaced by something even weirder. 